and welcome to CSI Hip Goes River. I'm Detective Lisa, and this is Detective Henry, Inspector Celia, uh, Officer Nisha, and Dr. Victoria. Um, so, the muscles need a good river to stay in. Is this Hip Goes River? A winter mare is the muscle. Uh, well, not Mr. Muscle, but the river muscle. And these guys can be over 350 years old. And um, they have a really special life cycle. They, uh, after they hatch, they need to find um, a fish skin to attach to. Uh, and after this, they are free living and need to dig down into the sediments. And they are there for up to eight years before there are adult muscles. And they also provide uh, our valuable pearl. So, can juveniles be restocked in Hercules River? There are several suspects in this case. One of them is uh, burden camping, uh, the construction work, uh, the horse course race course, <laughs> and the prison, the marina. And all along the river, there are lots of trash, and it's uh, right next to a high traffic road. So, is Hercules River the place for these muscles? Or are they? <laughs> method which involved throwing a bottle into the river and measuring the time it took to cross the length of rope. Real fancy CSI stuff. Don't try this at home kids. <laughs> really. Next thing we did was uh, measuring pH and temperature with this thing with Jiggy here. Next we measured phosphate using so-called falcon tubes. I believe most groups use these mm -hmm. but these next piece of equi equipment is something I don't think anyone else has used. And this is uh, something to measure the pore water and river water oxygen levels. And I think this deserves an explanation. Yes, because we needed some help with this. So we asked someone from GeoBio to come help us investigate the pore water approximately. Two ladies said yes, broke along a syringe, attached to that was a long uh, capillary tube. They inserted the tube into the sediments Pull out the uh, syringe and in pour water, pour water flow, and then measure the oxygen from that. Simple, very clever. The next thing we measured was E. coli <coughs> using sterilized bottles to find out how many bacteria is in the river. And finally, we measured the biodiversity. The way we used this was kick sampling, which is basically putting on waders jumping into the river and just stomping furiously for several minutes and kicking up all the sediment. And as I think Neil found out, these waders are only sort of waterproof. <laughs> <laughs> and we also found out that if you kick sediment and the sediment is really soft, the sediment sinks and you sink along with it. Just going down and the smell. The smell. Rotten eggs in the morning. Love it. So, <laughs> Henrik, what did you find? What did we find, indeed? <laughs> we can begin with the flow volume, which was calculated from the flow rate. And we can see that it is generally kind of low. The muscle is a filter feeder. That means that it needs to grab food particles from water flowing past it. So it needs some kind of speed to the water, really. And we can see that H and A is pretty good, but at B, F, and G, it's not that good. If we move on to the pH and the temperature, both of these are really okay. No problems here. We can't really tell if the temperature is okay in the winter or the summer, since we measured in the autumn, but at least in the autumn, it was okay. If we check the E. coli, Mostly okay here, marked by the green spots, but we have one yellow spot 
which is F, kind of bad, and we have a red spot at G. The levels, levels here are off the charts. And we talked to representatives from the water department and they suspect that this is due to uh, septic tanks. And they said that these tanks work as intended, but they were built 60 years ago. So it just dumps waste directly into the river. So not very good. But it probably won't affect the mussel very much. The real pro problem here could be the phosphate. And this is generally too high for our poor, poor muscle. We have one green spot, which is at G, several yellow spots, and at D is in the red, which could, which could mean that juveniles could be killed off pretty easily. Old muscles could perhaps cling on for dear life, but it doesn't look too good, and it gets worse. Unfortunately, we were not able to measure the poor water oxygen concentrations at sites B and H because of the very poor sediment there. For the other sites, we got in general values below 1 mg per liter, which are pretty low, comparing them to the recommended values for the mature river mussel, we see that it's pretty bad. Um, but, however, we know that we found uh, river mussels at mature river mussels at site B and E, so it's probably acceptable but not optimal. But then our investigation took a dramatic turn. <laughs> Behold, be <laughs> be ladies and gentlemen, even I am gasping with this. <laughs> this terrible truth. And then we have a horrible a murder weapon. <laughs> and then I will put it up to Officer mm -hmm. Nisha who will take, give you more information about our case. Good work, Dr. Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> okay, muscles are not only the victim. Other elements are also victim. From the key sampling, we found different biodiversity which is shown in different colors. At site D, we found the largest amount of the highest amount of the different animals. And uh, is it really highest? No, we can say. Because we found only bugs, clowns, and orms. And at site G, we found the lowest amount of uh, animals. And if we see at every uh, site we found only bugs and worms, but other animals almost nothing. It's, it's horrible. <laughs> so, how do we bring the river back to life? The evidence. Well, if you take away the oxygen sample for just one minute. Then we have some options for you. We have lab, uh, sites A, F, G, and H. Those are the ones that we will recommend. Because phosphate, okay, E. coli, okay, river flow, okay. Uh, if you put, we'll put out some uh, juveniles here, then they will probably survive. It will be okay. But that is, is a little case. If you look, at the um, oxygen levels, they will be killed. It is not possible to uh, introduce juvenile muscles into the river as it is. And that is one of the questions that we asked. But how do we solve this? Well, we have a murder weapon, low oxygen levels. Who is the suspect here? If I, want, if I can ask you guys to be the jury for a minute, I will ask you, raise your hand if you think that the destruction sites are the most responsible for this. Anyone? Okay. <laughs> the race course. Talibabana. More. Okay. The uh, prison. <laughs> Not so. <laughs> there are a lot of uh, people in the prison, but they. Uh, and then we have the camping site. The camping site. Some? Some? Some security stuff? 
And uh, what more? Yes, the construction work. What do you think? Okay. Well, here's our verdict. We think it's a combination of the, horse pro uh, the racetrack, construction work, the road in general, because of the sediments. There's a layer on top that we need to remove. We need to create a new foundation for the, um, for, uh, the muscles, so we need to clean the river. <laughs> <laughs> and if the muscle will help, they probably would. They want to create a new home. So what should we do? We remove the top layer created from the horse poop and all that stuff. Remove that, get some oxygen down in the, in the, in the foundation so that if you reintroduce the juveniles, they will actually be able to breathe. And if they're able to breathe, then they probably will survive. survive. What do you get then? They now become adults. They will survive. And then, what do you have? A, a sustainable population. And that is one of the dreams that we want to do with Paris River. But we need to do something, and we need to do something now to make a happy clam again. <coughs> remove the trash, remove the sediments, make a new foundation, and then we can make it perfect, perhaps. <laughs> so then, ladies and gentlemen, that is our uh, verdict, and we'll leave it to you to execute the sentence.